In Creo Parametric, you can route wires and cables manually. Let's take a look at how to do that. First, let me orient you to my assembly. It has five components. I just have a simple part here representing the case that we are going to route the wires and cables in. I have a couple of D3899 connectors. Let me open them up and show them to you. These have a lot of detail. And if you're wondering, hey, Dave, where did you get that beautiful model? Well, you can see that this is from Amphenol. If you go to Amphenol's website, you can download these different connectors. And I added a couple features in here. I added an axis that will help me for routing wires and cables. I'm actually not going to use it. But I also have a coordinate system where the Z axis is pointing along the direction of the wires to be routed. And I've renamed it to entry. Let me go back to my assembly. And also I have a couple of back shells in my model. Let me open those up. And yeah, these are probably way too much detail if you have a really big assembly, but hey, I think it's beautiful. All right, let me go back to my assembly. And to start off routing the wires and cables, I will go to the applications command, and then we will choose cabling over here on the left. You'll notice that right now, Everything is grayed out because I don't have the basics in here yet to wrap wires and cables. The first thing I'm going to do is create my harness part. The harness part is going to contain all the different features for the routed wires and cables and their locations. I will click on create harness and here you can see in the new dialog box, here we have part selected. Here we have harness as the subtype. You can change the name if you want. I have the option here to use the default template. When I click OK, I actually get an error because my default template is in a different set of units than my assembly. So I have to choose one of my other default templates, like the one that I have for metric. Let's click the OK button. And now you can see the harness part in the model tree and it's got a little green diamond at the bottom right corner indicating that it is the active harness. So an assembly can contain multiple different harnesses and you can specify which of those harnesses will end up getting the different wires and features that are being routed. You can also see that now in the ribbon I have a bunch more icons available. The next thing I will do is create my spools that I want to use. When you go to the spools command, it will open up the menu manager. I highly recommend when you create spools that you write them out to disk. Then you can just go to the read command and then read them in. So for example, in my setup, I have the config.pro option pro spool dir set to a folder where I've saved a bunch of different spools. But let's cancel out of here. I want to show you how to create them manually. We go to the spools command, then I will click create, and let's create a wire spool. And I'm going to call the first one. Let's make a 12 gauge wire. Let's make 12 black. And hit the enter key. And here we have the name of the spool. And then we have a few different columns of information that we need to fill out. And so here we have the minimum bend radius and the thickness and the units in millimeters. Let's say that I only know the value in inches. I can change the set of units. And then for a 12 gauge wire, that would correspond to 0.0808. Let me enter in that value. And then here we have the color value. And right now it's non-existent. I'm going to go to the drop down list over here. They do have a few colors prepared for you, but I'm going to type in my own using a three letter code. Let me use BLK for the name of the color. And here we have the minimum bend radius. If this was in inches, this would be really high. And for the minimum bend radius, some people use two times the thickness, some use four times the thickness. I sometimes even use eight times the thickness. I'm just going to use two times the thickness. Let's enter in 0.1616. That's good. Let me click the OK button. And so, click on spools again. 
Let's add in a couple more real quick. Let's click on the create button. Let's create another one. And this one, let's create an 18 gauge red and hit the enter key. And for this one in millimeters for 18 gauge, that would be 0.823. Let me make a value approximately twice that. Let's use 1.64. For the color, let's change that to red. And everything here looks good. By the way, if you go to the view drop down menu, you can add additional columns in here. You can see that there are a number of other additional parameters that you can define, but these are the minimum that we need for routing. Let's click OK out of there and OK to close that dialog box. And just one more. Let's create a new one for wire. And by the way, you can also see that you can define cables with multiple different conductors. You can also define ribbons like you have for a lot of printer cables and also sheathing. But let's just choose the wire option and let's make a 20 gauge blue. And for this one, let's see, for the thickness, that would be 0.519. And for the minimum bend radius, let me use 1.02. For the color, I will use my three-letter code, BLU. And then click the OK button. And so now I have my spools created. Now I will then designate my connector. So let me go to the auto designate drop down menu. Here is the designate command. The designate command allows you to specify which of your components are allowed to have wires start and end from them. So I will click on designate. And now in the message area, it's prompted me to select an assembly component for connector definition. Let me click on my D38999 over here. Then it asks if you want to enter a file name to read connector parameters. Ah, eh, you don't need to do that. Just hit the enter key. And then for entry ports, I will click on that. Here we have my coordinate system called entry. I will click on it. And then it asks me for the internal length of the cable inside the connector, I'll just leave the default value of zero. And then it asks me what port type this is. And this deals with having multiple wires run in or out. If you just have a single wire that can go in that entry port, you can choose wire. But if you're going to have multiple conductors that can go into that entry port, you can choose the grouping, whether they should be laid out flat or if they should be grouped around each other. Let's use the round option and then done and done. So I've got my first connector designated. Let me go to my model tree and make it a little bit wider. Let's go to the icon for the tree settings and then go to tree columns. Here in the model tree columns dialog box, I'll click on the type drop-down list and let's go to cabling parameters or cabling information, one of those in there. And let's add in the designation column and click the OK button. And so that way you can see that, hey, we have this connector has been designated. We could change the name if we want to use a different reference designator. And here you see our different spools. All right, let's designate our other connector. Go back to the designate command. Let's pick this connector. And once again, I will not select a file for parameters. Let's go to entry ports. And then here is the coordinate system entry in that one. Let me hit the middle mouse button to let Creo know that I was done selecting coordinate systems. Beware, you can hold down the control key and select multiple coordinate systems if you want to use them. Once again, I will use zero length inside of there. And for the grouping of multiple conductors, I will use the round option. And then let's, let me just hit the middle mouse button. 
Uh, let me just go to the cabling parameters just to show you that you can always select a component and we can see the entry ports that have been designated in that one. Looks like I accidentally got a second one in there, but that's okay. I'm not going to route any wires or cables to it. Let's hit the cancel button out of there. And now we are ready to create some wires and route them. Let's go to the route cables command in the ribbon and in the route cables dialog box. On the left hand side, you can choose if you are going to create an individual wire, if you are going to create a cable, if you're going to create a ribbon cable, or if you want to search for any cables that you might have from an XML file or a neutral file that has the wire and routing information from a schematics package like Creo Schematics. But I'm just going to create a wire or cable. Here is the name of it, W1. You can change the name if you want. I'll just leave that name. From the options drop down menu, you do have the ability to allow wires and cables to start from undesignated coordinate systems and also start from wire cable locations. But let's not change any of those options. And I'm going to route a wire or cable from this coordinate system and then I'll pick this coordinate system over there and right now we are just getting simple routing that's good from this drop down list you could choose to follow an existing cable or follow a pipeline I have neither of those in the model I'm just going to click the OK button to complete the creation of that wire in the in graphics toolbar you can change to a thick cable display and that way we can see that we have our wire routed in there if i expand the harness part in the model tree here you can see that we have the w1 wire routed and this icon if it had a break in the routing the icon would actually look broken now let's go back to a thin line display and I want to refine the routing of the wire because right now it's passing through this wall and I actually wanted to run along the surface and then through that hole. So you can select the wire in the graphics area. You get a mini toolbar but from here I'm going to hold down the right mouse button so I can insert locations. And let me zoom back in. Let me make sure that my axis display is turned on. Oh, okay, I can see the axis. There is an axis on the screen here. This is an axis from the back shell. And I always like to start off by selecting that axis so that I can get the wire coming out nice and straight out of my connector and out of the back shell. Then for the next location, I'm just going to eyeball it on the surface here and you can grab this and you can move it around in order to change where exactly it's located on the surface. Now I'm going to hold down the right mouse button to get the pop-up menu so I can choose that the next location is going to use a direction. I use use direction a lot. Let's choose use direction. I'm just going to grab this edge and then we can drag it some distance that we want. If you wanted it to be some exact value, hey, you could double click on this number and enter it in if you want to. All right, so that's good for the next location. And then I want it to go around. So I'm going to change the next location option back to on. And then let me just eyeball it on the surface here. Then for my next location, once again, I will use a direction. I'll grab this edge and let's drag it about over there. That looks good. And then I'm going to use the right mouse button to go back to on, to be on an entity. But we also have this option here to go along an axis. So that way I can pick the axis that is going through that hole and it actually creates two different locations on the axis that you can use so that's good for the next location let me right mouse button again and turn off the 
a long axis option. And I'm just going to pick on the surface about there. Let's now change to use direction. And then let me grab this edge just so that we get a nice straight path going along the surface. And once again, let's change to on. I'm going to zoom in so I can find that axis going through the back shell. Let me just drag it out a little straight. And everything looks beautiful. Let's hit the check mark. And so now I have that wire routed. Let's go to thick cable display for a moment. And let's route a couple more wires. Let me hit the thin center line display. Let's go back to route cables. Let's create a new wire. And then I'm going to change the spool. Instead of using the black spool, let's use the red spool. And for the locations, actually, before I even pick my entry points, I'm going to change the routing type from simple route to follow cable. And the cable that I want to follow is this one. And I want to follow from the very first location point here to the location point over there. So that'll speed things up. Now let's route from, oops, let me click in this collector. You can also use the right mouse button to change which collector in the route cables dialog box is active. Let's go from this entry port to this entry port. And you can see how the new wire is routed along there. And just to show you the reroute command in a moment, I'm going to change the route type from follow cable back to, oops, let me go to, I forgot to apply that one first. Let's follow the cable. Once again, pick it. Forgot to hit the apply button. No big deal. All right. From that location to this location. All right. Then I will hit the apply button. For the next one, I am going to change this to a simple route and pick the same entry ports as before just to show you a different way. Oops, let me get the spool. Let's change this to the blue spool and then click the OK button. And so another way that you can get a wire or cable to follow an existing wire or cable is to use the reroute command. I will select this and it is this command from the mini toolbar and for reroute here we're going to pick the starting location so I want it to use this location and then for the target end location let me zoom in and grab that location point and that's good let's hit the check mark so now I have all three wires routed let me go to a thick display and you can see that we have a little blue a little black and some red in there for the three different wires which are traveling along the same path so that is how you can manually route wires in creole parametric i hope you enjoyed this video for more information please visit www.creowindchill.com if you learned something from this video please give it a thumbs up and if you like this video please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.